Hi, I'm Doug Williams with Farpoint. I'm here to show you the Farpoint Quick and Easy Field Collimation Method. The Farpoint Quick and Easy Field Collimation Method assumes that you have already center spotted your primary mirror. If you have not, go to the Farpoint Center Spot video to learn how to do this. We also assume that you have a well collimated laser. Go to the Farpoint Laser Testing and Collimation video to learn how to test your laser and collimate it if necessary. Lastly, you need a Cheshire collimating tool. No testing required for a Cheshire. It is the essence of simplicity. Step 1 of the Farpoint Quick and Easy Field Collimation Method is adjusting the secondary mirror alignment so that it points directly at the center of the primary mirror. Put the laser flush into the focuser and turn it on. Important tip, don't tighten the locking screws on your focuser when you put the laser in the focus tube. This might tilt the laser slightly. The laser moves away from being flush when you let go. Simply hold it flush or have a friend hold it flush. If the laser won't stay flush and you have no helper and you simply must use the focuser locking screws, do so very gently. Now adjust the screws on the secondary holder until the laser beam hits exactly in the middle of the center spot or triangle on your primary mirror. You may have to loosen one screw while you tighten another to do this. Sometimes you'll tighten or loosen two screws simultaneously. Don't worry, you will soon get the hang of this and it will be easy. Once you think you have the laser centered, move your head around and look at the laser in the center spot from different angles to make sure it is really centered. Try to distinguish the center of the laser beam from the laser speckle surrounding the beam. Center the tight center part of the laser beam in the very center of the primary mirror center spot. Take your time and be as accurate as possible. More tips on this are in our Farpoint Quick and Easy Field Collimation Method FAQs. Step 2 of the Farpoint Quick and Easy Field Collimation Method is to adjust the collimation screws on your primary mirror so the primary mirror is pointing directly at the secondary mirror. Important tip. First make sure you loosen the lock screws on your mirror cell if you have them before you start playing with the collimation knobs. Another important tip, before you start trying to collimate by turning primary mirror collimation screws, be sure that all the screws have the proper amount of spring tension. If the collimation screw is too tight or too loose, you won't be able to collimate. Make sure that all screws have room to move in either direction, but they should be mostly tight. A good starting guess would be to tighten them all the way down and then back off two turns. Weak collimation springs in the primary mirror cell are a common problem. Replace them with stronger springs if necessary. Farpoint sells replacement springs for many scopes. To collimate the primary mirror, adjust the collimation screws until the return beam of the laser comes back upon the outgoing beam. You don't have to be exact. Within a half centimeter or so is fine, because you are going to finish collimation with the Cheshire. You might be close enough right off to go straight to the Cheshire. Here's the outgoing beam here, and here's the return beam here. So an important tip. If the return laser beam is not even near the outgoing beam, it is probably because you swapped the position of your individual truss tubes when you installed them this time. Number or label your truss tubes and always install each truss tube in the same position each time. Next time, you may even be close enough with your primary mirror collimation to go straight to the Cheshire. Turn the primary mirror adjustment screws while watching for the return beam of the laser. If you are way off, you may have to wave your hand around until you find the return beam. Continue turning the primary collimation knobs until the return beam merges with the outgoing beam. Don't be shy about turning the screws. Just try one, watch which way the beam moves, and then adjust the beam until it approaches the outgoing laser beam. Move on to the next screw and repeat. This will put your primary mirror orientation in the ballpark. Again, you don't have to be exact here. As soon as you are within half a centimeter or so, you can move on to using a Cheshire. On a far point laser, if you hit anywhere on the black aperture, you are fine. This is not actually a new step because you are just giving the final tweak to the primary mirror orientation that you started when you made the laser return beam coincide with the outgoing beam. But now you switch to your Cheshire for the final tweak. Important tip, don't tighten the locking screws on your focuser when you put the Cheshire in the focus tube. This might tilt the Cheshire slightly. If the Cheshire moves away from being flush in the focuser when you let go, just hold it flush. Now you are going to continue turning the primary mirror collimation screws until the reflection of the center spot is centered in the reflecting ring in the Cheshire. This is less than perfect video, but it is actual footage of the Cheshire in the focuser. We are holding a flashlight to more fully illuminate the Cheshire, which is something that you can do in the field. 
The shusher is more accurate than the laser for aligning the primary mirror. Turn the primary mirror collimation screws until the center spot on your primary mirror is in the center of the shusher reflecting ring. We prefer triangle shaped center spots for this. When the shusher tells you that the center spot of your primary mirror is centered in the secondary, gently tighten the locking screws on the primary mirror. Now check again with the shusher to do a final collimation using the locking screws. The problem with locking screws is that they always move the primary mirror just a bit and that makes you have to do the second and final collimation using the locking screws themselves instead of the collimation screws. Better is to replace your stock collimation springs with stronger springs from Farpoint or elsewhere. If you get strong springs, you will find that your primary mirror holds collimation without the locking screws. In this case, don't use the locking screws at all. Just leave them loose or remove them entirely. You are better off without them. If you need counterweights for your scope, Farpoint makes nice weights that attach on your mirror cell using your locking screws. Again, keep the locking screws loose. The locking screws holding the counterweights need not lock the mirror in place if you have strong collimation springs. This is the best use of your mirror cell locking screws. And that's all there is to the Farpoint quick and easy field collimation method. Now practice this a few times in your living room at home before you go out observing next time. And you'll be able to spend more time observing and less time collimating. You don't need to watch the rest of this video unless you want some background information. If you're interested, stick around and I'll show you a few more things. Let's be clear, these instructions are for field collimating your telescope using the quickest and easiest possible method. This method will easily collimate your telescope in less than two minutes with no fuss. Further, your collimation will be better than 99% of the reflectors you see at an average star party. We go to star parties and see too many people spending entirely too much time collimating only to achieve substandard results. This is understandable given the poor instructions that come with many scopes. The internet has a wealth of information, but sorting the good from the bad is a daunting task. If you want more information than what is in this video, Farpoint has a collimation FAQ web page. It has background information and explains why we chose this Farpoint collimation method over other methods. But I'm trying to keep this video short and sweet, so I won't go over that here. The Farpoint quick and easy field collimation method is quick, easy, and 99.5% accurate. For most observers, using an average quality reflector, that last fraction of a percent is undetectable at the eyepiece, even with a star test. If you have a premium reflector with zero structural flex, and you wish to chase that last fraction of a percent, Farpoint will cover how to do so in other videos and instructions. Then you can worry about squaring the focuser, offsetting the secondary, calculating the sweet spot, adjusting the z-axis, using an auto collimator, and all those other gremlins that the collimation experts chase all the time. Some of these fine adjustments are made at home or in a shop. You do them before you go to your observing site. The rest of these fine adjustments are done when you field collimate. Hint: When you collimate at your observing site with these advanced methods, you're still going to start with the Farpoint quick and easy field collimation method and then refine things from there. So practice this method until you are proficient before you move on to optional advanced collimation techniques. You will probably find that you don't need to bother with advanced collimation techniques because you can't see any difference at the eyepiece. The problem is that these advanced methods take time and they make collimation look too difficult for novices to understand. So they throw up their hands in despair and trade in their reflector for a refractor or SCT because they often mistakenly believe that the refractor SCT will never need collimation. But reflectors are great. They are without rival when you consider aperture per dollar and image quality per dollar. Properly designed and collimated, reflectors give awesome Im images that easily surpass a smaller and more expensive refractor or SCT. Collimating a reflector is actually easy. I just did it. Here's a final helpful hint. If you line the primary mirror in the mirror cell so that the triangle points orient with the collimation screws, it will be easier to figure out which collimation screw to turn and in what direction to turn it. You can even make a label like Titan to move towards 4 o'clock or something like that. This is unnecessary, but it can make things easier for some people. Okay, thanks for making it through this video. You could have collimated six daubs by now. The whole point of the Farpoint quick and easy field collimation method is to get you out there observing in the quickest possible time instead of spending all your night collimating. So get out there and observe. 